Welcome back to the part two video of in introducing um, introducing Octave. And uh, in this video, I'd like to focus a little bit more on some of the next steps. We talked a little about printing text, uh, creating variables. And uh, before we get into actual conditional statements, it makes a whole lot of sense at this point to uh, try and create a valid script file. Okay, so um, first of all, I'm going to get rid of some stuff here. I'm going to clear my screen. So I'll do CLC and then I'll also do clear. And what clear will do is be, first of all, be careful with that because if you have a lot of valuable variables created, clear will actually create uh, clear out your variables workspace. So you'll see that that will make that disappear. Um, what I want to do next, I want to create a script because I'm going to be typing a little bit and I don't want to do line by line. So if, for example, if I did an if statement in here, then I, it would just get very, very messy. It would be hard to keep track of what's going on. So up, up here, you see that uh, you can hover over these and it'll tell you what they are. File version history, uh, if you want to use that. If you, you know, sometimes you might need to refresh this. You can actually upload files here as well. But I want to create a new one. And notice that it gives me a file name. So first of all, notice that the default name that it's going to give me is my underscore script dot M. But I don't want that. And also, I should point out that you do not want to delete the .m. You want to leave that .m there. So I'm going to call this um, file, I'm going to call it my first file. Okay. And if I, want, I, I also can't have spaces in the file name in this case. So uh, if you want to have these words distinctly separated, you can do underscores in here as well. Kind of similar to defining variables in principle. And nothing really happened. Now I have to go find that file, see where it, where it is. And um, there it is, my first file.m. I open that, and now I actually am editing a script. So uh, notice that you have a few options, a few different options here. You can throw this file away, you can rename the file, you can download the file, you can print it, uh, you can toggle different word wraps, share file in a bucket, and you, want, and you can save it. Okay. So I'm going to make this window a little bit bigger here as well. First of all, uh, this, this we're going to delete out of here. So I'm going to take, take away any existing lines in there. And notice that what happened when I press delete. Now this file is underlined. Before I run this, if I click run right now, notice what it did. It actually displayed something, but I don't have anything in the file. What Octave is running is the most recently saved version of the file. I haven't saved it since I deleted that line of text. That's why I see the underline. Now look what happens when I press the save button, that underline goes away. Now if I click run, now the file as expected doesn't do anything because there's nothing inside of it. All right, so what I want to do is I want to, first of all, I'm going to create a couple of variables in here and I'm going to say mm, x equals two. All right, now if I click save, again that underline will go away. And if I run this, it will just set the variable x equal to two, and you'll see that variable populate inside of here, and it also prints it, right? So in some cases, uh, in, in Octave, Octave prints everything. It, it echoes everything you type in. So if I don't want it to actually print the variable name, I can suppress the output by putting a semicolon right after that. But I don't really want to, I already know x is being given the value of two. I don't want to see it output when I run the file. So now when I click run, it still creates the variable. I can see if I now clear out my variable workspace, if I run this file and it's been saved. So uh, it doesn't display anything, although it did create a variable called x. If I click on it, it says x equals two. All right, what I wanna focus on here is actually running a conditional statement. So a conditional statement is, well, the first kind that we'll look at is if slash else if slash else. And sometimes we want a result to occur only if a condition is met. For example, let's say that if x is greater than two, and this is exactly how you would type it in, by the way, uh, lowercase if x greater than two, then we would want it to do, and this is, we're gonna have to tinker around with this, print the line x is bigger than two, okay? Now we want another condition. So what if x is equal to two? So we have this else if, and up, so it's like, kind of like you would read this out. If x is greater than two, then do something. Else, if x is equal to two, we want to maybe print the line x is equal to two. Now, this might seem like a typo that I have two equal signs in here, but 
uh, having the two equal signs versus the one equal sign is the difference between making an assignment of, of the value of two to x. So if I just had typed in x equals two, then I would be trying to assign the value of two to the variable named x. The double equal sign is a, is a test. It's, it's asking the question, it's a true or false statement, is x equal to two? That's how you can read this. You can, you can read this as, is else if x is equal to two, print the line as x is equal to two. Else if x is greater than two, so I'm going to always do else if I'm going to have multiple um, multiple checks, right? So else if x is greater less than two, then print the line x is smaller than two. Now, what other option is there? Well, maybe that's uh, all I want to consider, but I want to also maybe consider the case where somebody has typed in or x is maybe like a string, maybe it's not a number at all. So I don't want it to print any one of these. So I'm going to create my final condition. Otherwise, if none of these conditions are met, regardless of what the other condition is, print the line, x is not a number. So let's go to Octave and actually execute this. All right, so I have my script file, and I'm going to start typing this. I mean, it doesn't matter how many lines you skip, make it look nice. And I'm going to say if x is, our first line we wanted to be, if x is greater than 2, okay, so I'm going to maybe use some spaces here. And now when I press Enter, it uh, creates an indentation. That's a, a very helpful thing to have because now I know that what's, what's in this line is going to be the result of what happens when x is bigger than 2. All right, well, I want to print. I'm going to do F printf, and I'm going to type in, I want this to read x is bigger than 2. x is bigger than 2. Um, now, before I close my quote, notice here I'm using double quotes. I just decided to use double quotes. I'm going to do slash n, so it creates a line break. Otherwise, things are going to get messy. And now I'm going to go back uh, to do my else if. Now, else if, and I don't like how compressed this is, so maybe I'm going to leave a line there. x is equal to 2. Then I want to print x is equal to 2. Break the line. Okay, and now I'm going to go to the next line. Else if, whoops, I need to give it the condition. The condition does need to be on the same line. X is less than two, then print X is bigger than two. Sorry, X is smaller than two. All right, period slash n. Okay, now notice how it rolled over to the next line. Um, that's just because it, uh, it's the way the uh, word wrap is taking place, and you can kind of mess with that here. And the final thing that I want to do is I actually want to have my, my final condition. Well, what if it doesn't meet any of these conditions? Well, then we want it to print. We know that it's not a number, because if x isn't equal to 2, it's not bigger than 2, and it's not less than 2. x is not a number. Maybe somebody accidentally input a, uh, a string. And so it can't be compared. OK, so now if I save this and I run this, one of a few things is going to happen. Number one, it's, it's first of all, what's going to happen is it's going to make the assignment of x equal to 2. And then it's going to check the next line. It's going to say, oh, OK, I see an if statement. Oh, by the way, I forgot one thing here. When you're done with that if, you have to need to end it. So you type in end to let Octave know that basically it's, it's done checking condition. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to come down to this next line. It's going to say, OK, is x bigger than 2? And it's going to say, oh, nope. Uh, octave finds, oh, no, the number is 2, so it's definitely not bigger than 2. Let me jump to the next condition. Oh, otherwise, if it is equal to 2, oh, it is. So it's going to execute that line of code right there. It's going to say f print f. Uh, oops, f right there. x is equal to 2. So it's once it's determined that x is equal to 2 and prints that, it's, it's going to automatically terminate the, the, the conditional not going to continue checking conditions because we need to be the smart ones and we need to make sure that we give it the, the right set of conditions so that it produces the right output. Okay, so I'm going to run this and see what happens. Okay, so it did indeed output what I wanted it to output, which is that x is equal to 2. Um, if I change the value up here, 5, let's say, I need to save it before I run it again x is bigger than 2. Okay, that's a true statement. What if x is negative 1? x is negative 1, x is smaller than 2. Perfect. 
what if I type in x is equal to the word hello? And I save that. I run it. Uh, it's telling me x is bigger than 2. Uh, well, why is that happening? Uh, that could be happening because, let's see. I'm so used to um, using things like Python, where in Python you would definitely get an error. I think what's happening is that Octave is casting the, the string as a number. Um, so I don't think this will work. So maybe what I can do here is just omit that since I really just had that in there for, for a string. What I could do here, though, is I could have my first condition be uh, checked to see if it's a string. And if it is, it'll throw an error. It'll say, hey, that's not a number. I can't assess it. OK, so in any case, we at least have a way able to print whether the number, if it's a number that's in fact inputted, whether it's bigger than, smaller than, or equal to. But what if I actually wanted to uh, print out the number, uh, something like x is bigger than 2 since x equals 5. So maybe what I want to do is actually print this out. And I can do that very easily by having one more, uh, one more condition. And in that f printf statement. So let's take a look at another example where we maybe input somebody's name and we input somebody's age. And we want to print the line, the client is 22 years old and is named John Smith. Or if the person has a different name, has a different age, or the client is blank years old and is named blank. Well, so what we can do within our f printf statement is we can have uh, some variable placeholders. So if at a certain point within the text, like here, we want to print uh, a number that's stored in the variable. What I could actually do is replace the number 22 here with a percentage sign and then the appropriate symbol afterwards. So if what I want it to output or place in there is a string, then I would do percent %s in place of the number 22. If I wanted to print a number that's uh, rounded to the nearest whole number, I could do percent %0. 0, excuse me, I, I could do 0%, uh, 0, 0 0.0f. If I want one decimal place, I could do percent %0.1f, two decimal places, 0.2f, and so on and so forth. It's kind of a weird notation, but it is what it is. So let's see if we can make this happen. I'm over to Octave. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to take all this and delete this file out. And so I'm going to define uh, name equals John Smith. I'm going to put a semicolon after that because I don't want it printed. And then I am going to define age to be 22. Again, I want to suppress the output. I don't want to see the age until I print it. And now, so what I want to print is I want to print the client is 22 years old and his name John Smith. So I will type in f printf parenthesis, the client is. So in place of the, the number 22, I know what I want to print is a, an age, right? I know that's going to be a whole number. So I'm going to type in percent 0.0f. I don't want that rounded to 22.0 or 22.00. I just want the uh, whole number itself. And let's see here. So I've got that placeholder there for the age. And then what I want is uh, I want to have the next words to be years old and is named. Years old and is named. And then what I want here is a placeholder for a string, right? Because I want to display a name. So I'm going to do percent %s. Now I'm going to close the quote. Oh, before I do that, though, I want to do a slash n so it creates a line break. And I'm going to put a little space in here so it makes it easier to read. I'm going to close this, the, the double quotes. Now, again, this is just wrapping to the next line. It's not me actually pressing enter. And now I've got to actually tell it what to put in place of percent %0.0f. So now I'm going to do a comma, and I'm going to type in, OK, I want this uh, float to be age, and then another comma, and then the next instance of percent, I want that to be name. Now, if I click Save, I run. And you'll notice that it, in fact, printed the client as 22 years old and is named John Smith. That's precisely what I wanted. Um, if I make this 0.01f, this will, oops, 0.1f, this will give me the person's age, but notice it adds that extra 0, .0 on there. I don't want that, and that's why I chose 0.0f as the proper format. 